Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Uh, this is part two of the 2018-19 Panini Donners Optic Basketball 20 box blaster random team break, number one. Um, we started popping these open to realize that these are actually fast break retail editions, which is like double or triple the price of blaster editions. But we're just going to keep going with it. You guys will get retail editions. There is a mix up with the distributor. They sent us the wrong thing. There you go. There's the list again. So you guys win. So that was a randomizer. You'll see the uh, actual randomizer in part one of this video, which is already uploaded. All right, let's continue. Sorry about that delay, but we are, we are back on track. Um, no, I think, I think what happened was, was we ordered blasters. They charged us for blasters. They sent us fast break. Thanks. Carmos is like Drew Kerr wins. No, everybody wins. Every single person. You just saved yourself another like 60 bucks a spot on this break. So everyone wins. Whether you hit or not. Even if you go hitless, you're like, well, at least I paid a third of the price of what I would have paid for this break. So there should be zero complaints from everybody. <laughs> and can thank our distributor. Bank error. It's like a, it's like a chance card in Monopoly. All right, box number one. It's Kevin Durant, Valanciunas, Dwayne Wade, there's Giannis. <coughs> Excuse me, onto to come. Nope, Costas onto to combo. His brother. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm losing my voice already. I'm going to sleeve and top load those a little bit later on. Our shipping team will take care of that before they get sorted and shipped out. Just in the interest of time, we're going to breeze through these. And James Silas is our first autograph. I just want to make sure we weren't losing money. That's for the Spurs. David with that one. Gordon Hayward to 15. Uh, yes, there's a Court Kings Blaster, which apparently is an international edition. There's Devin Booker to 85. So here, just to, just to kind of make the story clear, here's what happened. We ordered Court Kings International Blaster Edition, 20 box blasters, Court Kings from Australia, right? We ordered Pris uh, Donner's Optic Blasters, Donner's Optic Mega, which is on, I think is going to be breaking on eBay sometime next week. That's all we, that's all we ordered. We got everything except for they, they switched fast break with blasters. I guess it happens. <laughs> we were charged for blaster editions. We posted the break as if it was a blaster edition. And then everyone wins because now it's retail edition, <laughs> which, which would have been double two or three times 
the cost of the spot that you paid for this one. So everyone already wins. Even if you don't hit, you can consider it a win. Yeah, it, well, it's just interna it's international edition. It's just on the label in the in the back. It says Australia Blasters on the label, or international. Well, I think it says Australia Blasters. So I think it was just maybe it was just an international exclusive. Chance card in Monopoly. All right, next box. There's Josh Kogier to fifty. Mo Wagner. Gianni says, Joe, I'm going to get you in on the minus one and a half run line in baseball. Yeah, I don't know. How do you how do you calculate that? I don't know. I've got I've got a bit of a system where I I get win expectancy percentages and then balance it off with the with the line on the book and then you could find like you know market inefficiencies there. I don't know how to I don't know how to do that run line wise aside from just guessing. <laughs> Vinny's like for the next noir you hope that they Accidentally sent it. This is the first time I've, I, don't, I think we've ever seen something like this happen. So maybe someone in the warehouse was was uh, smoking the dube. Maybe a couple dubes, a couple doobies. <laughs> Drew's like, I always laughed at those those chance cards. Like that doesn't ever happen in real life. And here we are. There's the autograph. It's rated rookie auto Hamadou Diallo. That is for OKC Drew Kerr with the Thunder. Wait, how come the, the the Padres are only down by two runs now? Come on, Rockies. I have financial interest in the Rockies. And now it's 11-9 in the top of the ninth. Just close it out. How many outs are there? MLB Network, go to the game. It's ridiculous. They scored four in the top of the ninth. Padres, there's an out. Just get him out. Wade Davis. Boy, is this Wade Davis, Wade Davis meltdown? Wait, were those runs charged to Wade Davis? No, they were charged to this this Dunn character, Mike Dunn. Dunn, he's done. All right, now Wade Davis, and he'll he'll close it down. Come on, Wade Davis. It's a good one for the PC, Drew Kerr. Your uh, dunk contest winner. I feel like he could. I feel like he's got a bit of a ceiling that he can reach. There you go. In play, outs. Austin, I like that. Good. All right, so Gianni, how uh, how do you do? You play with their 
where there are large run, win, and pitcher ERA discrepancies between the two teams. The money line generally over minus 200, so you go with the run line minus one and a half, which is usually, right, minus 110 or minus 120. Interesting. And uh, and how many how many units do you put on something like that? Because based on the market inefficiencies, when I play, I also calculate a percentage. And so some some games I'll I'll put more units on a game. Some some games I'll put fewer units on a game. So when I, whenever you guys see me play like plus one ninety five. I'm probably only playing one unit on it, as opposed to the Rockies at minus 108, which I have multiple units on, <laughs> which is why I'm kind of sweating this game a little bit. All right. Although I have, I had, did have a pretty good day today, so even if I lose out the rest, of it, I'll, I'll be even. But I, I could be up a lot if the Rockies can hang on and get the third and third out. I've got two right now. There's the, uh, according to the Turks, according to the Turkey, terrorist Enos Cantor, not a friend of the state. For us, just a basketball player. D'Angelo Russell. What's going to happen with D'Angelo Russell? I heard someone say, if they get Kyrie to the Nets, doesn't that make D'Angelo Russell somewhat expendable? I think he's going to get signed. There's Mo Wagner. I see. I see. Wait, what's your unit size? What is what? What? What does one unit equal? Or maybe maybe we're we're not we're not talking the same language right now. Nice, Ray Allen, Miami Heat. Like one unit usually one unit equals one dollar. One unit equals five dollars. One unit equals ten dollars. Someone's one unit could equal a hundred dollars. Right. So if one unit equals ten dollars, are you saying you if you put twenty five units down, are you putting two hundred and fifty dollars down on a game? Maybe that's how you roll. I don't know. There's Ray Allen. Fast break for the Miami Heat. Joe Carmonas. Yeah, Ray Allen. Carmonas. How are you? There's Michael Bridges. Yeah, you got to relax, Joe. Wait till the end. We're, we have like 15 boxes to go. Let's just let it ride. Take a deep breath and just let the hits roll in on a break that could have been triple the cost. Think about how all the uh, all the money being saved. Nice. Jeremy sold a Kawhi Leonard Contenders card on eBay for 556 bucks. What, like auto? I see. I see. You're, you're going percentage of weekly. Ban okay, I got. Okay, I got you. All right. Okay. Clippers. I don't know. Uh, well, uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander would be the rookie you're looking for, Carmona. So the Clippers. Did you walk this guy? Come on. Oh, passed ball, and a walk. 
You gotta be kidding me. Now Fernando Tatis Jr. is up to bat. Bases loaded. Top of the ninth. Oh, they have the game on right now. Oh, come on, Wade Davis. Two and one. Yeah, for a second, I thought you were just like, yeah, I thought you were betting 60% of your total bankroll. I was like, how is that sustainable unless Yanni's like a millionaire? <laughs> My per unit is, is pretty low. I'm not going too crazy, but it's better to, come on, base hit. Is that going to tie the game? Wow. Padre scores six in the ninth. They tie the game 11-11. And, and the Rockies were up like 11-3 at one point. Well, Fernando Tatis Jr. hit the... Made that hit, so I guess... Got that hit. I guess that's good for the hobby. There's Avery Bradley to 50. Hi, Alfred. There is no schedule. There's nothing. Uh, I think I think Noir basketball might be sold out by the time I finish this break. Oh, maybe I do have a schedule. Oh, I do. There you go. Although we were we were delayed, so I think the next break will be much later than would be much later than that. So I think that should bring us to. That should bring us to uh, this at the end of this break. This should bring us to around ten thirty LA time. So, and I think Nuggets are just left in Noir. So we should fill up Noir, and that'll be our last break of the night. Everything else we can do tomorrow. And there's Mo Wagner, rated rookie autograph for the Lakers. It's gonna go to Stephen K. <laughs> True curse, like that's the most sad good for the hobby I've ever heard from Joe. I know. Emotions are on my sleeves right now. Well, I guess the good news is, good news is if they, uh, you know, it's, Rockies still come up in the bottom of the ninth. So they're still, they could still walk it off. Boy, hang out. What's going on? Just busting open some basketball, watching some baseball, sweating out some of my baseball picks. That's all. The usual. <laughs> the usual of what, what we do at the Jaspies. So, Drew... And everybody else, I don't, I don't think I've talked to Drew in a minute or two. Uh, Drew, what's going to go on in basketball this offseason? I feel like it's going to be bananas. It's going to be nuts. You know? It's going to be wild. Durant is out for the next season, right? He could be a free agent if he opts out, which he probably will. Clay Thompson, I think, is a free agent, right? And he's out until March or February or March of next year. All right, see ya, Alfred. All right? Kawhi had now has won a, a, a trip. What does he do? You know, does he stay with Toronto? Does he go to 
LA, Clippers, Lakers, don't know. You know, uh, do the do the the Lakers reignite talks with the Pelicans on Anthony Davis? I think they have. The Nuggets were or Nuggets Nuggets are left in Noir basketball. The 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 Knicks were thinking they could get KD and Kyrie and maybe get Anthony. Davis. Is that gonna happen? I don't know. Man, and then we got draft coming up, free agency coming up. Right, with Katie and Clay, the West is wide open. What do the Rockets do? You know, the Rockets are disappointed with their playoff run. So they're going to try to retool. They're not going to be able to trade this guy, but they're going to try to do something knowing that the West is wide open. Portland's got to do stuff, right? Portland's got to think, hey, we've got a shot at something. Steph Curry's going to break scoring records next year. He's the only guy on that team. He's Marvin Bagley. So it's wide open. Yeah, Gianni's saying the free agent list, insane. I think the AD stuff, Anthony Davis stuff will go down before the draft, right? And the Rockets try to, who's, who's going to take? Oh, they're going to eat contract and then get rid of Chris Paul and and open up flexibility for another like mid-level exception or something like that, maybe. Oh, and it's Dante DiVincenzo is your autograph. That is for the Bucks, Joe Russell, for the Milwaukee Bucks. Right, that does make the off season fun. We don't no one no one knows what's gonna happen. That's the fun part. There you go, there's Ronnie Hollis Jefferson. Right, what are the Lakers do? I have no idea. Are are they gonna are they gonna move the young core for Anthony Davis? Are they gonna do what it takes to get Anthony Davis? So it's LeBron, Anthony Davis, and dot dot dot. They try to fill in some shooters around that the, that pair. There's Zach Levine to twenty. Four out of twenty for the Bulls. I don't know. So it's going to be wild. Next box. All right, so Drew Kerr's thinking that Kemba stays. I think so too. Butler goes to the Clippers. Kawhi stays in Toronto. Kyrie for Brooklyn, KD to Brooklyn, AD to the Lakers, Tobias stays in Philly, and Clay stays in Golden State. I think Clay stays in Golden State too. I think Clay has always expressed that. Clay has even said that he'd take less money to stay in Golden State too. Roy's asking, so how's the how, who's going to be the best team in the East? Bucks or Wizards? I like the Bucks. Well, how are the Bucks going to retool? What are they going to do? They got to they got to kind of freshen up that squad too, right? If Kawhi stays, that could make things interesting. Does that mean they they keep Marcus All too? You know, keep the band together, try one more year. Gianni would rather see the Lakers go after Bradley Beal in a trade for far less cut. Yeah, that'd be the smarter move, but I don't think the bulk of uh, the bulk of all the rational Lakers fans here in LA would uh, would like that. Well, yeah, and I don't think the Lakers want to dump the entire farm for Anthony Davis, which is why I think a third team needs to be involved, and then and then the speculation just is could be literally anything. You know, because when you add third, three teams, then you can just play with, you know, the the ESPN trade machine for hours and just come up with anything that's wild and it's just crazy speculation. Really, the only thing that could be reasonably speculated would probably be, um, would probably be just like a, a one for one, a one team for another team kind of thing. 
Rated rookie autograph, Javon Carter. Middleton to the Lakers. Can he shoot? He can shoot. He's a shooter, right? Uh, Grizz, Ryan Miller with the Grizzlies. There's Gary Harris. Chris Paul to 50. Son Whiteside. Steven Adams. What do the Thunder do? Maybe the Thunder, Russell Westbrook, and Paul George, and Steven Adams. Maybe that team thinks, hey, maybe we can do something. Maybe we can take advantage of, of a week. of a weakened uh, Golden State team. Do they move Mike Conley? Mike Conley could be a solid player for a lot of teams. Arnado hits one to the wall. End of the ninth inning. Padres and Rockies still tied at 11. Drew Holiday would stay in New Orleans, right? I feel like it's going to be Zion and Drew Holiday and whatever else they get in the trade for Anthony Davis, which I think makes the Pelicans a pretty interesting team at that point. So you have Zion, Drew Holiday, um, Julius Randle, who I always liked, I wish the Lakers would have kept him. And Brooke Lopez. I, know, I always hear a lot, of, a lot of the basketball people always talk about Drew Holiday as if he's not going anywhere. They're like, well, you know, Zach Lowe or Rachel Nichols or Doris Burke and Brian Windhorst. They all, when they're talking about it, they'll be like, well, Zion and Drew Holiday could be. They, they don't even think about Drew Holiday as, as being moved. But maybe he will be. I don't know. Be interesting. I don't know, maybe there'll be a team willing to create the the all holiday team. a lot of points. Winner take all on the points. I think that's the most points I've ever seen come out of a box. There's SGA. Luka Doncic. Jamal Murray. One of one, Jamal Murray. Look at that. Who's got the Denver Nuggets? Drew Kerr with the Denver Nuggets. One of one, Jamal Murray. Not too shabby. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo woo!
So Drew was saying just a second ago, he doesn't think that, that Drew Holiday is going to fit that sort of rebuilding team narrative in New Orleans. So you're thinking that if you're New Orleans, you're trading Anthony Davis to the Knicks for Dan Smith Jr., the number three pick in Kevin Knox, and then you're looking at Dan Smith Jr., JT Barrett, Kevin Knox, Zion, Drew, Julius as a good young core. Okay. But see, here's the trick with Anthony Davis, though. He's made it so clear that he wants to go to the Lakers. Are you, if you're the Knicks, are you giving all that up just for what amounts to maybe a two-year rental? Just to see him walk and go, go sign with the Lakers in free agency? I mean, I think... And then, well, I guess Anthony Davis, and then maybe if you're the Knicks, you still try to get Kevin, Kevin Durant. You still try to get KD as a uh, max him out, right? Carmona's saying, so Zion the Pelicans by himself with Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis should mentor him the way the Dream Team mentored him. I don't know if that's going to happen. I think Anthony, Anthony Davis doesn't want to, you know, he wants to try to find work in a city that he enjoys, I guess. That's what he wants. He wants the opportunity to get a job where he wants to work, not where he was drafted. There's Zach Collins. I don't know if they're going to do that. You know, Anthony Anthony Davis is still young enough and at a stage in his career where Anthony Davis wants to um, want to, wants to add like championships to his resume. I think after Anthony Davis wins a couple championships, if he's ever in a situation like that, yeah, I, then I think he'll be in more of mentor mode. But I think he's still in. Hey, I still have to get my. I still have to try to win a chip mode. I haven't even gone there yet, let alone thinking about. Being a being a grizzled veteran and mentoring people, but I think KD. I think someone will still max out. I think Knicks will still max out KD. I think even with the injury, I think someone still will. And imagine this: like if you can sign Kevin Durant, you just shelve him for a year, you can still tank and still get another high pick to pair with Kevin Durant. A slightly weaker Kevin Durant after that Achilles thing, but still a good player. Kata Bates Diop for Joe Russell and the Timberwolves. 11 out of 20. Gianni saying, fun fact, AD and Braun have the same agent. Right, Clutch, right? Clutch Sports. And then Braun's agent has been putting AD to go to the Lakers to save what's left of Braun's career. Barkley said this thing. I don't know. I can't really trust what Barkley says. I feel like he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's entertaining, but... Here's CJ McCollum. I know that... Yeah, I don't know. Wait, who said that? Whose agent said he straight up... Straight up say he won't re-sign with Boston? Anthony Davis's agent? Like if he gets traded to, to Boston. There's Lonzo Ball, one out of twenty. Lonzo Ball still has a lot to offer. Lon uh, LeBron James also has a good relationship with uh, Pelicans GM David Griffin. I don't know if that means anything, but Oh, AD's agent straight up say he won't re-sign. Well, I think Anthony Davis has said, has said, I want to go to go to the Lakers. You make it happen. 
right? Agents don't direct. Agents serve the player. So if Anthony Davis has said specifically, unequivocally, I want to go to the Lakers. It's the only place I want to go, blah, 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 blah. You know, you get me there somehow. You know, that makes it interesting. It's interesting. Anthony Davis is kind of really betting on himself, too, because, because uh, imagine if, if you disrupt the entire basketball free agency and trade window just because you want to go to the team that you want to go to. Fine. Players have that right. You know, I'm totally fine with that. But that also puts a lot of pressure on someone like Anthony Davis if he forces his way you know, or negotiates, leverages his way into the Lakers, right? You know? So there's some additional pressure there. To succeed, to perform, to succeed. All right, there's Kuzma. Sorry, I realize I have to start hustling a little bit on this break. There's Kyrie. Where does he end up? Lakers, maybe. Anthony, Anthony Davis, Kyrie, LeBron. Role players equals championship. And we got Marvin Bagley of the third. Nice fast break autograph for Drew Kerr and the Kings. That's strong. Kings could be a fun team next year. There's SGA to 85. Gianni's biggest fear is that Lakers trade the farm and 80 gets hurt. He'll lose it. Well, I mean, injuries. I mean, that shouldn't stop. I don't think that should stop you. Or I mean, you can't be worried about that. It could, it could happen to anybody, you know, like... Hey, you're welcome, Drew. I don't know. I was just kind of thinking about... I, I don't know what's going to happen, but I, I think what's interesting, I think Drew mentioned this earlier, is that there will... All answers, I think, will be... Or all questions will be answered within a week or so, right? Before the draft. I think all the AD stuff will happen before the draft. Because we're talking about, you know, top five pay, like the Knicks pick and the Lakers pick. We're talking very high picks kind of being talked about moved around so if the deal is going to get done it's going to be a lot easier when those picks don't have names attached to them when those picks actually become people right it's easier to trade picks than people so it's got to happen beforehand Parker. Oh, the camera got moved over a little bit. There's Tony Parker. Ooh, they still can't get used to in a Charlotte Hornets uniform. More points. Remember, winner take all the points. 
Patrick Beverly. Is he retiring? I don't know. I mean, he played one more season. I don't know what his contract is with the... How long is he with the Hornets? Michael Kidd Gilchrist. Oh, no auto because of the points. I was like, where's the auto? Then I realized, no, oh, the points replaced that. So, <laughs> what was the 15,000 points supposed to be? The Trey Young? All right, next box. Rockies really should have just closed. They should have closed out the game. Now it's the end of the tenth inning. It's gonna be one of those things where, where both teams just hunker down, and it's gonna go like seventeen innings. Still eleven eleven at the end, of bottom of the tenth, end of the tenth, going into the eleventh. It's gonna go like five more innings. Wait, so he only so Tony Parker is retired? He only played one year with the Hornets and then he's out? Why did he yeah, exactly. He, he was like sad that he played one season with a random team instead of finishing out in San Antonio. What was the point then? Was like was it one of those like, oh I'm I'm gonna see if I still have it? And if I do, I'll sign another year, and if I have it, I'll sign another year, and if I still have it, I'll sign another year until I don't have it? Was it maybe it was one of one of those things. Dion Waiters, blue. DeAndre Ayton. I'll save one of those. Kevin Knox, where, where will he go? There's Jerome Robinson for the Clippers to 95. What do the Suns do? I feel like they, they've got some interesting pieces on their team that just need to click at some point. I actually think the Rockies do have a decent bullpen. They just, they just didn't show up tonight. Or actually, Johnny was saying that one of the guys that gave up the four earned runs at the top of the ninth was was just off the IL, maybe a little rusty. And there's Keon Dueling for the Clippers. That goes to Joe Carmonas and the Clip Show. So I guess that's what happened. Box. Who needs Lonzo Drew? Lakers? I'd love to keep Lonzo Ball. Especially with uh, with with Jason Kidd as a the coach there. I'd like to see what happens throughout the season with the coaching staff. That's gonna be interesting. A lot of chefs in the kitchen. Oh, the Suns need Lonzo. Who, who do we get from the Suns then? I think Lonzo has a pretty high ceiling. But yeah, I guess Lonzo... They got 
Lonzo's just distributing in that offense and just moving the ball around to Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton and even Josh Jackson. You know, how many assists a night would Lonzo get? Right, they, yeah, exactly. They have no point guard to run it. How many assists a night do you think Lonzo gets in that offense? 15? 15 assists a night? Oh, I see. They could be the 13th of the AD deal. Yeah, I'd rather not have to have to move Lonzo or Kuzma, but I think, yeah, once three teams start getting involved, names like that might start to have to get involved, too. Keep Josh Hart, says David. Yeah. I like Josh Hart, too. I, I thought Josh Hart would maybe have made a little more progress than he did this season, but I still like Josh Hart. There's your autograph. Hey, it's old Laker, Vlade Divac. Fast break signature is going to Stephen K and the Lakers. Bruce Brown. Svi Mahaliak. Shaq. Davidson, I think Kyrie and LeBron stumped the growth of younger players. Yeah, I, I mean, I think they do. You know, they, I don't think they're at a stage in their careers where they're like, hey, it's time for us to be the grizzled old veterans to take care of the young guys kind of thing. Um, I was talking with Johnny about this last night, David, where, where the Lakers, like LeBron in a vacuum, right? With, with nothing else around him. LeBron in a vacuum is an amazing player. It's fantastic. You know? But if you are going to add a LeBron James to your team, you have to do a lot of things to construct a team around LeBron that would be worth it to have LeBron. Right? So the Lakers' first sort of... Not mistake, but... The problem was that if you're going to get LeBron James, and the Lakers did, you have to do all the things to construct a team around LeBron James to make it worth having LeBron James, which they failed to do in year one. And now you start seeing Kyle Kuzma and Brandon Ingram and guys like that start to grow, and then you start thinking, well, I don't want to lose these guys. They seem like they're making forward progress. you know. So now if you're the Lakers, you're, in, you're stuck. You're in a position of, well, what the hell do we do now? Well, I know what they're going to do. They're going to they're going to move everybody to get Anthony Davis. There's Dirk and Whiskey Gold. That's to ten. Because they have to. Because they can't. You can't. You can't have. Yeah, you can't have a Kyrie or LeBron with younger players. They don't want that. They want to win championships. 
And that means, you know, the young players aren't ready to win championships yet. You got to get LeBron. You got to get Anthony Davis. And then maybe you go what, you know, not DeMar DeRozan. You do what the Raptors did and you try to build some solid, solid role players around him, create some depth, you know, some good coaching, some decent defense. That might get you the championship. And that might mean sacrificing that because you have LeBron. Because you're either wasting the future or you're wasting LeBron. You don't want to, and you don't want to be in a position where you waste both. You got to waste one or the other. And it's not going to be, no one's going to be wasting LeBron. Not his time. Because they're not going to trade him. There's Dwayne Dedman. Are LeBron and Dwayne Wade's kids playing together in high school this year? I didn't realize that. Oh, in that fancy high school in like a, like an hour and a half north of us? It's like a private school, but basically a private school for like athletes and their kids. There's Nick Van Exel. Another Laker for Stephen K. That team's going to destroy, right? LeBron and Dwayne Wade's kids. 7 out of 10. Nick Van Axel. how long this break was going to take. I feel like that's that 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 school also has not just LeBron James and Dwayne Wade's kids, but like a couple other like basketball players' children go there. That'll be playing together with them. Like Scottie Pippen's kids, maybe something like that. Or maybe they're older, but it'd be interesting to see see. The kids get to the NBA. That's the uh, that's the speculation, right? That LeBron James wants to play as long as possible and as late as possible, and then try to play at least one year. Play at least one year with his son. Is it Scottie Pippen's kids? That's what Vinny's saying. Kenyon Martin's kids go there too? There's DeAndre Jordan, Dallas edition. There's Kyrie Thomas for the Pistons. Jamal Murray. There's the autograph. It's Cliff Robinson. Old Clifford Robinson going to Greg J and the Trailblazers. I think that's what it's called, right? Sierra Canyon?
Kobe's kids are playing. His daughters are playing basketball. I think he's coaching their their daughter's basketball team. And they, he said he said in a, I think in a Jimmy Kimmel interview or something like that where he says him and his daughters are running a version, a simplified version of the triangle offense. Kobe's daughters go to Stanford, maybe. And went, went to, that's a good women's basketball program, right? Stanford. Just destroy there. Play for the Sparks. And end up coaching the NBA or something like that. there folks sorry we were sidetracked by the distributor mix up and then I realized this break takes a little bit longer than I originally thought and here we are but I should have this should be done with this break in the next 20 minutes or so um, And hopefully, has that has that last team in Noir sold out yet? We'll do it. We'll do it tonight. It has. Nice. All right, so Noir will be our last break of the night. So we'll do this. Whenever this finishes, we'll dive right into Noir, and that'll be our last break of the night. Anything, anything else that sells out... Uh, Anything that sells out uh, after that noir, we'll uh, we'll do uh, we'll do tomorrow. I'm here tomorrow too. Today's Friday, right? And I'll be here tomorrow. Nice, Johnny. So Giants and Dodgers both win. Good. Dodgers win. I always like that. And I think I had financial interest on the Giants, so thank you. Now we just need your Rockies to win, Johnny. Yep. And we're in the bottom of the eleventh. And there's Herb Williams, old Herbie. Herbie Herb, Herb, going to Greg and the Pacers. All right, so we just have these five boxes to go. We'll fly through these so we can get to Noir. Uh, what do the Bulls do? What do you guys think about the Bulls? That's a storied franchise, right? Especially with the uh, with Michael Jordan, you know, and their just incredible run in the '90s. But they never seem to have quite gotten it together after that. Derrick Rose for a second, you know, could have been like savior, but injuries derailed his career, you know. But now they got a couple pieces. We, we like Lori Markin in, right? No, Roy just says Bullsy the tank again. All right, so maybe, maybe not. You know, you don't, you don't think. I don't know. Maybe in a different era, Friesians would have loved to, to go all the way. Chicago's a great town, great sports town. Um, did Immaculate 9 sell out too? Something's going to get pushed, I'm afraid. No, this, we've been doing this break for the last hour, Joe Kroll. So, I don't know, I, maybe we'll just have to do both. 
It's TJ Warren. So this break took a little bit longer than I thought it would. Marvin Bagley, 85. Where's the auto? Right there. Hey, speaking of the Bulls, there's Craig Hodges. So Bulls need a point guard, huh? Well... What about... What about the Orlando Magic? I think we briefly touched upon the Orlando Magic last night. They were a playoff team, and they were kind of they were kind of giant killers last year. You know, some of the teams that were like, you know, top half of the table kind of teams, they took down, albeit you know in single games, but so they've got some fire, they got some heart. Maybe they can add some pieces. Retain some pieces, ask some pieces. <laughs> He's like, my Mets match lose two tonight. That's all it comes to. What was with that game last night? I saw Pete Alonzo kind of blew that game for them. Drew says oh, Magic need to be patient. I agree. I feel like they can they, they can kind of build something if they, if they stand strong. I think Pete Alonzo blew that game for them last night. They were up. They were tarping it. Pete Alonso said, don't tarp it. And then they gave up a couple runs in the top of the ninth. Then they had to tarp it once the game was tied. Suspended game. Reanimated today. L. An extra innings. In the 10th. There's, the There's J.J. Redick. Nice. I feel like I don't see a lot of J.J. Redick autographs. Uh, that goes to David and the Sixers. There you go, Dave. Hey, Steve. What's going on? Good call by Doris Burke to... Uh, to throw a softball question to Kyle Lowry about DeMar DeRozan so Kyle Lowry can give his buddy some love. There's Marvin Bagley to 50. Saw his autograph earlier. No worries, Dave. Thanks for getting in the break. Lucked out. Turned out to be a bigger value than you initially thought it was. Nice, Steve just got off work. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm approaching. We're approaching our last couple breaks of the night too, break or two of the night. Vinny said, "I don't actually." Oh, you should, Vinny, you should get a. I'm a big proponent of uh, MLB TV. Not that, uh, no offense. Not that the Mets are, are are getting you all jazzed and excited to watch Mets games, but. If you wanted to, MLB.TV is uh, is actually pretty great. Especially if, you're, uh, if your team is an out-of-market team. Like, I can't watch my Dodgers on MLB TV, but I can catch, I can catch a bunch of other teams, which is pretty cool. So 
especially on like a lazy Sunday or something like that. Have a couple games going while you're cleaning the house. You know, okay. Nice. I happen to get it for free because I'm a T-Mobile customer. T-Mobile every year has a, has a um, has a free Tuesday thing. A free Tuesday thing where they uh, where they give you MLB.tv for free the entire year. Otherwise, it's like hundred bucks. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you're you're at a restaurant, so. Uh, fired up on the uh, on the. You can have it on your mobile device. <laughs> I guess that's not fun. I think there's replays. You can watch replays, I guess. But then that would cut into Jaspy time, maybe. We don't want that. Chris Mullins. Remember Chris Mullins and his buzz cut? That goes to the Warriors, Drew Kerr, last spot mojo. There's Amari Carroll. Oh, it's a fancy restaurant, not not the kind of restaurant where a man a man of your stature could just be Chilling on the phone watching baseball games. You can just uh, run a. You can switch to a switch jobs to a, a gastro pub type place, Vinny. Those are hip, right? <laughs> They're hip around here. Hmm. TV's all over the place. Spencer Dinwiddie. To 85. Nikola Jokic to 85. Everyone's starting breweries these days, seems like. Every other every other corner in downtown LA. And even in Santa Monica now, I see like breweries there. They just have a brewery and they just they just uh, pop open, you know. A roll-up garage door and just have set up some wooden tables here and there, some stools, and all of a sudden, have a food truck roll through the parking lot. Of course they do, Johnny. Of course they take the lead. There, there was no excuse for the, uh, no excuse for the Rockies to blow this lead, Johnny. Now, right, Milwaukee has one million breweries. You'd be one of a million. You have to, so you have, you'd have to open up. What would be like Oppo in Milwaukee? Have we missed? Is the food truck game out? Have we missed the food truck? We're not, it's that too late? Everyone has food trucks now? What's the next thing? Let's think of the next thing. Let's think of the next million dollar food idea. Next trend. I was, I was, I was trying to think about what the, what's the next supernatural creature that's going to be popularized in, uh, in young adult novels. <laughs> There's vampires in Twilight, right? Wizards in Harry Potter. Uh... What's the next supernatural? The zombies have are, have been done, right? Rich is in the food. Uh, vegan? So we go go vegan. Yeah, every other thing's a vegan thing here in LA. There is Ernie DiGregorio of the Buffalo Buffalo Braves. What do the Buffalo Braves turn into? Clippers, I think. Buffalo Braves. It's a Buffalo Brave in the heart of upstate New York. It's a Buffalo Brave. Yes, they moved to San Diego where it was renamed the Clippers, and now they're the Los Angeles Clippers. That goes to Joe Carmonas. There's Giannis.
Oh yeah, they they are bringing Godzilla back, huh? I don't know, but I don't know. In Twilight, you know, a girl can fall in love with a uh, with a vampire. I mean, I don't know. Can girl can a girl fall in love with Godzilla? I guess it is 2019. Is Bogdanovich? Is uh, is sushi trending back into trendiness? True. All right, so Vinny's like vegan and non-alcoholic, quote unquote, bars don't really fly in Milwaukee. There are some, really, but I'm not investing. I feel like we missed out on. I feel like I missed out on uh, on hookah bars. I feel like I missed out on. There's Kyle Lowry. I feel like I missed out on vaping vape shops. Vape shop just opened down, down the street from my apartment. I missed out on that. All right, last box coming up. There you go, Nick Stanley. Do you have, do you have Machado? At least someone's winning. Nick Stanley, do you have Machado in like your uh, DF lineup, DFS lineup? <laughs> well, th those basic white girl trends, basic white girls, they shop. Drew Kerr, they spend money. So that, that's, that's where a lot of the retail market ends up demographically <laughs> pushing towards what Edward is not really a vampire they don't sparkle I think don't they sparkle I think there's a I think there is some old vampire mythology that claims that they do sparkle I think Anne Rice version does not sparkle they usually they usually take out the sparkle element I think maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Let's wick, let's wiki vampires when at the end of the show. Oh, I heard of this draft app. You like draft a, like it's more fantasy, but it's not different from Draft King. But you literally draft a a lineup every night, right? I think Buster only on the Baseball Tonight podcast had had some advertising for that. Your friend almost died from vaping. Rich, how did that happen? All right, last box. We did it, folks. Sorry for the delays and all this stuff, but we did it. We made it. Thanks, everyone. There's DeMar Rosen to 85. Gosh, now that yeah, I see that now. Oh, a Hunter Renfro home run. All right, well, Johnny looks like no no W for us. There's Michael Bridges. That's for Drew Kerr and the Suns. Last bomb. I think both your last bomb Mojo teams hit. Vinny says I'm going to open up a card bar, sell beer all night, and then sell your cards to drunk people. You know what's funny? We um. We're actually building a card bar in our new shop. <laughs> it's not going to serve booze, I think, but it's going to be kind of built out like a like a like a bar. Wow! So it made him the vape. So whatever the formula was that he was using made him violently ill. That's that's scary. I don't I don't vape. Yeah, new shops can be great. I'll be bugging every, I'll bu bugging all of you guys to come and visit the shop. All right, folks, there it is. We are done. Twenty boxes of retail edition. Fast break. We made it. We got to give away points to someone in the break, or randomized points to someone in the break. Everyone has a chance at all of those points. 
points actually sell pretty decently on a secondary market. Look at what 15,000 points could be. Okay. Winner take all on the points. You get 15,150 points total after seven times, two and a five. Got everybody from the list right here in here. Seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seventh and final time after seven times. Name on top. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Derek Williams. Nick Stanley saying they're about mid five hundred. Well, whatever it is, Derek Williams, it's a boatload of points. Congrats to you. Thanks for getting in. You all you get fifteen thousand one hundred and fifty points. Uh, thanks everybody. Joe for JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. We'll see you next time for the next break. Bye bye.